Printing in progress. Please stand clear. Printing. 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 Assembling navigation system. Energizing flux capacitor. Installing artificial intelligence. Your vehicle is ready. For a hundred years, we've been making vehicles pretty much the same way, the assembly line. And it's efficient. A large modern factory can roll out thousands of vehicles per day. But it isn't very flexible when it comes to changing designs very often. Here in Knoxville, Tennessee, a company called Local Motors is taking a different approach. Have they discovered the way of the car making future? That's what I'm here to find out. So is this the biggest 3D printer in the world? As far as I know, yes. As of this moment, this is the world's largest commercial large-scale additive manufacturing machine. Can you explain how something's actually made with this machine? Yeah, certainly. Whatever it is that you, you want to make, what we do is put it into a program. That's the instruction set that tells the machine what to do and where to go. And based on that pattern, we deposit material and in a layer by layer fashion, you start building up your shape. Local Motors prints the chassis of its vehicles out of a composite material that's about as hard as a traditional metal car body once it cools. And then if you really want it to be very precise, then you can come back in and you can machine it. You can take that material off and get those precise edges, those hard contours and shapes. About how long does something take to make? Um, something like a vehicle chassis it takes about nine hours. Stick on a few non-3D printed items like wheels and headlights, and the result is one of the company's sleek looking all electric cars. The company gets its vehicle designs through a sort of crowdsourcing process, in which engineers from all around the world submit designs and competition for cash prizes and royalties on the finished car. So if I had a design I wanted to bring and have you guys print, like how detailed does that design need to be? You just need the basic uh, CAD model, your computer-aided design, and we can work from there. We can take this one machine and we can change what it produces very easily because that's just done in a computer file. When I hear 3D printer, I usually think about the MakerBot-style desktop machines that were all the rage in the early 2010s, when it seemed like everyone was going to have a 3D printer in their house within a few years. In reality, though, the major advances in adoption in 3D printing have been happening behind the scenes, used for applications ranging from building houses in developing countries to printing living human tissue. It's morphed into a $10 billion industry that's projected to more than triple by 2024. But back in 2014, when Local Motor CEO Jay Rogers first started trying to 3D print entire cars, things were a little different. 3D printing had been used to make individual car parts, but printing an entire car body was another question entirely. There were far many more naysayers than there were supporters. People who said it can't be done or it shouldn't be done. No one had ever done it. Uh, nothing, to my knowledge, had ever been done at that scale, right? So it was less about the fact that it was a car, more about the fact that it was larger and 3D printed. Faced with a daunting engineering challenge, Local Motors reached out to Oak Ridge National Laboratory, a Knoxville-based government facility that was instrumental in the creation of the first atomic bomb. They were developing giant 3D printers, and they agreed to help Local Motors make the first 3D printed car ever, live at an international trade show in full public view. We said, let's 3D print the first vehicle in the world and assemble it and drive it off the show floor right there. That was the goal. It was very nervous making because we were getting close by the time we went to the show, but we were still failing in some of the prints. And so we were very nervous that we would get to the show and fail. How did it go? It was successful. And this is the result, the Strati. 
How you doing driving, by the way? I love this. It's pretty simple, right? Man, it's like second nature. It's smooth. I mean, it's somewhere in between a golf cart and like a, a dune buggy, you know. I mean, it's nimble. You're so low to the ground, but you just feel very stable. Yeah. You know, we had limitations. So like our roll bar that's back here, as you'll note, it's a little shorter than my head because the printer wasn't, at the time, capable to go up higher. What would you say the top speed is of this configuration? I think this configuration should be 25 miles an hour. I don't know, what would you say? Does it feel like we're zipping along? I feel like we could hit about 25, yeah. Feels about right. <laughs> Maybe on a downhill 30. Yeah. <laughs> the Strati proved that a 3D printed car was possible. But as a car, there wasn't much to it, and it's never really been commercialized. The company's first 3D printed production vehicle, the Ollie, is a bit more interesting. Ollie is a electric, connected, self-driving, 3D printed vehicle. It's a cute little box. In Japanese, it would be called a hako. And it is meant to driverlessly deliver people to places around a campus. A few Ollies have already made it out into the world, like here at National Harbor, just outside Washington, DC. They can run completely autonomously on a fixed route, though a human still rides along to take over when the AI can't figure out exactly what to do. So right now, are we in autonomous mode? Or yeah, are we driving? no, no, we're in autonomous mode. So right now we're in a geofence fixed route kind of environment. In the future, we could do uh, dynamic routing where people could actually call the Ali, um, just similar to an Uber or a Lyft. Oh, wow. What happens if like someone steps into the middle of the crosswalk or something? You know? well, yeah, so obviously if the vehicle perceives the pedestrian or cyclist stepping in, the vehicle will stop. So for example, right now it just saw that vehicle and it gave it the right of way. Right. So it understands what obstacles are there and then how to avoid them. It's amazing how quickly it feels like totally natural. Like I just don't even Right. Think you, about it anymore. You, you, know? you, you haven't know, turned around the whole time, right? I haven't you, checked you, the driver, like, yeah. he's still awake. Right? Right. It doesn't matter, right? Yes. Um, do you like driving? I mean, would you miss it if it all became autonomous? I, I think there is a set of people that will always want to drive. But I think in the future, you will have vehicles that are allowed to be driven on certain tracks for specially licensed and trained people. And then the rest of us will all drive in a connected, automated, shared mobility solution. Whether you think that future sounds amazing or appalling, it's probably the general direction things are headed. The trickier question is what role 3D printing plays in that future? For local motors, the main advantage is that it makes developing and retooling vehicles much faster than before. Traditional manufacturing is five to seven years from a decision to build a vehicle to see the first product come out. We are 12 months total to a sellable product. So we are, at a minimum, we're five times faster. That increased speed means local motors could update or customize its vehicles much more easily than a traditional car maker can. In fact, they already have a ton of ideas for future designs for the Ali, some of which are pretty unorthodox, like mobile grocery stores, mobile conference rooms, post offices, and even a mobile podcast studio. And Local Motors isn't the only auto company using 3D printing. It's been adopted by larger auto manufacturers such as Ford and BMW, where it's been used for prototyping new parts and even creating discontinued parts for classic cars. It's come in particularly useful in aviation, too, where companies like GE and Honeywell are using 3D printed parts to reduce the weight of airplane engines. But before you get too excited, 3D printing isn't likely to replace traditional factories anytime soon. There's still a major drawback, volume. What it doesn't do is things very quickly. So if I wanted to make 100,000 of something, this probably wouldn't be my process. You'd want to you know, maybe scale and do something else. Add in the time it takes to assemble the rest of the vehicle and you're looking at only about one Ollie per day from this factory. The company plans to boost production by building dozens more of these so-called micro factories all over the world. But for now, they only have this one in Knoxville.
still, there is an undeniable power in the ability to make basically anything you can imagine. In fact, I've already started designing my fantasy vehicle. So, local motors, when you're ready to make me a flying car with afterburners and, let's say, an espresso maker, give me a call. I'll be waiting. <laughs>